<laughs> yep. All right. Uh, yep, I'm back. All right, so let's bring our characters in to the right screen. I just want us to know that the entire time I'm very reluctantly going up these stairs, I'm muttering under my breath in Elvish how when we die going up these stairs, um, going up to a cloud, that Finn is going to have to be the one to explain to my dead parents in Elvish heaven how I died going up the stairs. <laughs> so you're climbing the stairways to heaven, is that what you're saying? But um, Yes. Um... Oh my god, that hat is horrible. <laughs> you said you wanted to play Storm himself. King's Thunder, so we are playing Storm King's Thunder. <laughs> it's like Mickey Mouse and Fantasia. Is it possible for me to get a token on there? Uh oh. Let me <laughs> so I can see what's going on. I'll do this. If he's not dead, or if he is dead, he's rolling around in his grave right now. <laughs> oh, he is. Rest in peace, Paul Dukas. The guy who wrote Sorcer Sorcerer's Apprentice. <clears throat> okay. So you guys should be able to see the right side, which is kind of what the tower looks like standing before you. You may not necessarily know that there's a first floor, second floor airy quite yet, but you can at least get an idea of the shape of the, the tower. Um, and you are standing on the cloud where you can see, and uh, over to the left it appears to be the opening, which is right over here, to the tower. But you still see nobody at this point. What would the party like to do? Oh, I don't like standing on cloud. I go for the entrance. Yeah. And you do see, uh, Ian, as, as you step on being one of the last people onto the cloud, you begin to see that the cloud stairs behind you begin to disappear one at a time from the ground up. Oh, motherfucker. Uh -oh. I, uh, I run up, make sure I'm with the party, and I tell them that the stairs are are poofing away. Okay. <laughs> Too late I, now. I guess we I, have one way to go. I use the dash action and burst between these two guys here, and uh, I can... Yep, so when you kind of walk into that main entrance way... Um, you kind of see a bluish curtain. Um, so it's an open archway that leads into an empty vestibule, as you can see. But at the back hangs a thin, translucent blue curtain that flaps in the breeze. And do the same thing. I dash over over here. Do we have to be in to see it? Uh, yeah, probably. There's a there's probably uh, a lighting yeah. thing. Yep. And the the vestibule that you're in is is empty at the moment. And that blue kind of wavy line is the translucent, flapping in the breeze, uh, blue curtain. Solid stone. The walls. Yep. Everything seems to be made of a of a solid stone the floor maybe like a, an alabaster type color yep stone floor see solid i give you like the most withering look you have ever received in your life gives you a dashing smile back <laughs> well i think if they wanted to kill us they would have done it on the stairs so i'm gonna just walk in i think if they wanted to kill us they'd have dropped a rock on her head that's true. Yep. So as remember you, Nightstone. As you move in, you see uh, 
Beyond the curtain lies a 100-foot high hexagonal chamber containing a giant-sized wooden table, a stone chair, dangling from the ceiling by iron chains are six crystal spheres uh, that seem to have a flame on uh, in them right now, so there's plenty of light inside, um, and it's illuminating the room brightly. And you can see about 20 feet ahead of uh, above you, the tower's second floor can be seen through a 20-foot wide hole in the soaring ceiling. And they're on a disc, which is this kind of dotted line um, that you see is where the hole in the ceiling is. Um, on a disc, starts to float down, you see our giant appear. So, um, do they give us a good description of this guy? So the two new party members are the ones that are in the room. <laughs> sure. We haven't learned <laughs> all the other stuff. <laughs> We're not gun shy yet. So you see uh, basically a cloud giant windswept white hair, wispy white beard, and a billowy purple robe adorned with gold stars. He is balding. Um, he has a couple of gold rings in his ears, hoop-like rings for earrings. Um, and he begins to float slowly down. And uh, seems to have kind of a, a befuddled look on his face as he sees um, all of you in the chamber. And he says to you, are you them? And he has a quizzical look on his face. Are we who? And he says to you, oh, my manners, my manners. First, let me introduce myself as the great wizard Zephros. And he, as, he, as you can see, he says, welcome to my abode. I welcome you here. But we have to get on to other things, more important things. Things are happening. And he says, are you them? Again, questioning, almost as if he just forgot what he said. Of course we're them. Who is it you're expecting? And then he kind of looks at you and he says, well, who are you? We were traveling along the road and your stairway appeared to us. And he, yes, yes, or yes. We. But what are your names? My name is Kalendal Philandriel Bethilakir. He says, no, no, you're not them. Who else are you? Uh, I'm Greybeard. He says, no, no, that's not you either. And he looks expectantly at the others that have not introduced themselves yet. I'm Ardrith Fairfirin. And he has a look and he thinks, Ardrith. No, no, you're not them either. Uh, Finwi Hasharan, Paladin of Corillian. Oh, he has a smile to his face and he says, Well met, Paladin. But. You were not who I expected. And then he, he looks at the last person who has not introduced herself yet. And he says, you must be the her then. You must be them. What is your name? I stare at him for like a whole 10 seconds before I say, I am Iana Gris Meliamne of the High Forest. And then he kind of gets this frown on his face and he's like, it's not them. And he kind of puts his hand to his chin and as he's thinking and he starts pacing um, and he's down on the ground level. Now his, the disc that he's floated down kind of sits on the ground and he's, he's kind of stepped off it and he's, he's walking around. He's like, it's not them. I thought for sure it was them. They told me it was them. And he's talking to himself. He's ignoring most of you um, at the moment. And then he looks back and he says, are you sure you're not Jarl? Nice. Oh, fuck stick. Do I look monkish? Or like a drow? 
Our, our companion Jarl traveled to the north days ago. We are actually on our way to meet him. So maybe you are them then. He says, well, welcome, welcome. Make yourself at home, but we must... We must hurry. We must continue. Great things are happening in the world, and I believe you're the only ones that can stop it. And he kind of motions you forward to further into the room, and he goes and sits at the chair. And he has a he opens a big book, um, and he starts talking. He says, uh, "For uh, let me go back to my notes here." Yeah. For several weeks, he says, he just kind of is speaking to all of you at once. Um, he says, I've been contacting the uh, other planes and trying to find out what has happened to the ordning. I can't tell you what has happened, but something has broken the ordning. And since that is true, this world is in grave peril. And all of the contacting I have done, the only name I have gotten of anything that might set this right is the name Jarl. What is the ordning? And he, and he looks at you quizzically and he's like, oh, yes, yes, small folk, I get it. Uh, the ordning is the set of laws that the giants follow. And it's what kept the giants in the areas and places that they were and the laws that they follow. And the king of the giants um, tells us what laws and who's in charge. But that has now been broken and nobody is listening uh, to those in charge anymore. Giants are just doing as they wish the tr different tribes no longer following the rules that have been set forth after the dragon wars. Like the giants who attacked Nightstone. He says giants attack Nightstone. What giants attack Nightstone? And where is Nightstone? Do you have a map? Ah, he starts rummaging through some stuff. He says, uh, yeah, and he, he unrolls a, a giant-sized map, and you guys have to kind of climb up onto a big old table to see it. And he's like, yeah, you have a, a picture or a map of the Sword Coast. I will point out where Nightstone is. And he's like, giants attack there? What giants attack there? Some giant in a floating castle dropped rocks upon this city. And he kind of has a frown. Cloud giants attacked a human city? Oh, what have my brother and done? I can assure you that I am nothing like them, and I am only here to help you. And he seems fairly dismayed at you explaining the attack on Nightstone uh, by cloud giants. I will look to Ian and Greybeard and ask them what what was it that the giants tore from the ground? The nightstone. Oh, it was the actual nightstone. Yeah, <laughs> that's I. I make the same tone as she did, like a second afterwards. Yeah, the nightstone. <laughs> it was just a large hole in the ground when I saw it. Us too. Well, he says, um, I have talked to these planar entities, these minor deities and, and lords of different areas. And although I cannot directly interfere with what's about to take place, the small amount of uh, help that I am allowed to provide is to give you transport to where you need to go. So if you wish, wherever you are set, I, w I can fly you there to get you there quicker. And hopefully this will set you on the course that these deities and gods believe your group is destined to do. Can I insight check him? Absolutely. Do we know where Jarl is? Yeah, you get the sense that he's being honest to you. You also get the sense that he's a little kind of like a, a befuddled kind of mage wizard, the type that often forgets things or um, 
is very scholarly type, very uh, <laughs> head in the clouds. Uh, see what I did there? <laughs> um, but yeah, you're not you're not seeing you're not getting any deception from him. Well, clearly, if your uh, your deities have told you that you must seek out Jaro, that that should be our first course of action to retrieve our companion. He says, yes, yes, we must make haste. Um, where is he so that we may pick him up quickly? And then where will I be taking you? Well, we had planned on traveling to Tribor. He says, all right, Tribor it is. And he jumps back down, or he gets out of his chair, and he climbs back over to his um, his floating disc, and then it begins to float up. And he says, please, please, make yourself at home anywhere in the lower level. I ask that you do not come to the second level. Um, and then he kind of floats back up, and the, and the disc completes the circle up there again. And then um, you feel everybody's uh, stomach gets really queasy as you feel the cloud castle begin to move. I look at Finn and say, we have to go pick up Jarl first before we head to Tribor. It sounds like he jumped ahead of that. I did say that, but he didn't ask us where Jarl was. Can we, can we shout we up know. at the ceiling? I don't yeah. believe we know where Jarl was. Where were we supposed to meet Jarl? Uh, I don't have the map from him. Is that first city? Red Larch? On, on the long road. Westbridge? <clears throat> yeah, Red Larch. <clears throat> Red Larch? I think we changed it to Red Larch. Shout that up towards the ceiling. Red Charles Larch first. Red Larch. Oh, and then and then you hear from there, he's like, well, I don't know if it'd be a good idea for me to go to straight to that town, but I can go near it. And so that's where Jaro will be. He yells back down. Yes. And you still Although feel the, uh, the, the castle moving. He says, all right, we're off to the north. If we look outside, how fast are we traveling? Uh, when you go back outside, it it seems like a pretty good clip, but you're so high up and you've never had this perspective before as far as moving. You're not quite sure what speeds you're moving at. This is a great vantage. I'm going to be watching that. You're definitely moving quicker than you would have had you been walking. So we will certainly beat Charles to the city. Yes. Yep. You'll arrive earlier. All right. What else Travel does the group style. want to do at this point? Yeah, you just have. Uh, there's not really anything but just the floor there. I mean, um, you can make yourselves at home, and you guys begin to travel. I'm going to sit in that big chair because this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I walk around this room to see if I see anything on the walls, anything interesting, any writing, pictures, whatever. Um, no, there's not much here. Um, you can see some of the papers are on the table, the chair... Um, uh, the statue is of a cloud giant you don't recognize. Um, those globes that you see are actually hanging from the ceiling, dangling from the ceiling and providing light. And they appear to have some type of magical flame, um, on each one of them. So that's what's lighting up the whole area. Um, you can hear, uh, muttering from upstairs Every now and then, as it as it sounds like Zephyros talks to himself quite often, um, but it's not loud enough for you to hear what he's saying. Um, and that's about it. It's a pretty sparse room. Do you leave the map? Yeah, you leave the map. I'm gonna I'm gonna study that map because it's probably got to be a kick-ass perspective on uh, map making. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else good? I'm just kind of 
sitting between that statue's feet, holding on. <laughs> to the statue. <laughs> okay. Is there a window with a good view? Nope. No windows oh. on this floor. You gotta go outside. Ooh, I, uh, I think I'm doing that. <laughs> well, coffee black's out there. All right. I'm watching it. So we go through a uh, uh, basically the rest of the day of travel, and then the sun sets, and he's still traveling. Um, and then he kind of you feel the castle stop again, and then he floats down um, on the thing, and he says, um, uh, "Feel free. I I need to rest before I move uh, the tower again. Um, so we'll rest here for the evening, and then we'll continue our journey um, in the morning." And he says. Um, is there anything I can do for you before I go to bed? Should we just sleep here on these on the floor? He's like, sure. Anywhere, anywhere here is fine. Soft as a cloud. We uh, need to prepare food of some sort. Uh, can we cook on the stones? He says, yes, do you have yes. wood. Oh, how do we eat? We can Sorry. magically flame. <laughs> he can create a magical fire for you if you wish. Let's see what he can do. He has lots of stuff. How does he eat? What does a cloud giant eat? Uh, all his stuff is upstairs. Please don't say half elves. <laughs> because they're t- dwarfs. Um, hey, no. Yeah, he says if you if you want to cook in there, that's fine. He can always clean up any mess using magic. But he doesn't have anything to offer you as far as that. And I assume you all have regular rations before you left Waterdeep, would be my assumption. All right, I'll, I'll roll out the bedroll. Might be, the, right. might be the oddest place I've ever spent the evening. Okay. Uh, coffee, how long do you stay out? Do you stay out even at night, or you coming in for the evening? Just so we have an yeah, idea. Yeah, I'll come in for the evening. Okay. Uh, anybody need want to do anything during the evening, or anything special before I keep us moving? Nope. I'm good. Are there any books in this lower level? Nope. There are. You do not see any books in the lower level. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll sing some songs around our tiny little fire, I guess. Nice. I try, try to, to encourage. Try to encourage the bar, encourage the bard to <laughs> bust out his harp. I don't have a harp, but I will start to play the instrument that I do have. So it's a oh my, <laughs> it's a small reback. <laughs> so it's a stringed instrument that kind of sounds. Um, it's played with a bow. So, and you all do begin to hear some uh, snoring from up in the from the second level. Uh, all right, scoff, and I think God, it's even worse than Greybeard. Nice. <laughs> so you have a merry uh, campfire set in the bottom of a, a cloud tower, and um, the night goes uneventful. Everybody gets their long rest, and morning begins to peak up. The sun begins to rise. Um, where's the group during the rest of today's travel? How would you like to spend today's travel? Or where, I guess, would be. It's not much of the space. When a cloud giant says, don't come upstairs, you don't go upstairs. I stay right where I am. (laughs) Okay. Anybody else? I'm too respectful. Tigre would have been up there, but... If we weren't thousands of feet, I guess I would... uh, Yeah, I, I would monkey around, but to make 
the whole place crash a thousand feet to the ground is probably not a good move. So I try to stay put. Okay, and coffee. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna respectfully stay down. All right. All right. Are you still checking outside at any point? Coffee. Yeah. When I always, I want to see like lay of land and stuff and see what I can see. I like yeah. this vantage. Okay. So about midday, you think you spot? It's weird because you you've been looking at the the lands and you're you're getting a good sense of how things are and, and how far away things are. And it's giving you a really good perspective. You've really haven't had before on these lands that you have traveled before and you kind of recognize some places and you can probably still even see water deep way off in the distance. You're not that far, you know, you're not that many miles away from it that it's not still just a dot on the horizon or where the ocean meets. And, uh, but you happen to be just kind of scanning horizon and you seem to spot nine very th- uh, what you think to be giant birds heading, it looks like they they were flying along and then it's almost like you they must have spotted the tower and then they kind of wing over and they, it looks like they start heading towards the tower. Uh, that alarms me. So I will uh, run back in the tower and shout for Finn to take a look. Well, I'll run out. And then, thinking again, I will shout for Ian to come out, too. Yeah. She's probably got way better eyes than I do. <laughs> yeah, I'll head out. And her nature might help with this. Yeah, so then go ahead and uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. They're still pretty far out. Nope, I see nothing. It's the first time I've walked out, so this is all, all awful. I'm gonna head out with the party too. Sure. Yeah. Anybody that goes out can do a perception check. Okay. Yeah. So you you see, <sighs> it looks like a group of birds. Group of birds. You you're not getting any more detail quite yet. So they're gonna get a lot closer then before you really can tell what they are with those rolls. And the cloud has stopped moving. Um, no, it's still moving at this point. Okay. Should we alert uh, Zephros? I think that's a great idea. Agreed. All right, I'm I'm gonna go back into the the tower and shout up to Zephros that uh, we have incoming foul. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so as, uh, it takes probably, it takes them a while to, um, actually fly over to you. They, they saw the tower from quite a ways off and, uh, you're still traveling north along quite, it's still several thousand feet above the, the same road that you were on. And, uh, where are you going to, they're coming from... We'll just say from this direction. If you're seeing my ping, for those of you that are outside. Um, and as they get closer and closer, you start to think they, they look like they must be large vultures. And as they get closer, you think you see that there are people riding the vultures. Hmm. Human-sized people? Yes. They're and it, nine very thin, lightly armored humans seem to be riding the giant vultures. They're getting close enough that you can start to make out some details. You can see that the riders all wear steel helms that cover their eyes and resemble stylized bird heads. And one of them is equipped with a shoulder bag that's adorning a smiling face. 
and <laughs> they kind of wing in. Uh, and Nothing from Zephyros yet? Yeah, Zephyros hasn't... Um, no, he's still traveling. He doesn't... Uh, he hasn't Someone... come down. Well, I'm going to step back onto the stones. Good point. All right. I have my bow out and ready if they ever get hostile. I have it pointing to the ground, but with an arrow already knocked. Okay. Uh, let me... There we go. And so you begin to see these vultures land on the cloud and the, with the people on them. Uh, let me get Do all they that. Do uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they haven't done anything. They're just landing their birds and they begin to dismount from their birds. But they look like they've been there before. Mm, I mean, you can roll, but... You can try an I mean, insight in... check. Okay. Oh. So does it look like something they've done here before? Or do they look um, like they're trying no, to figure out what's No, you're not seeing any. The yeah, they, they seem to be cautious. They seem to be okay. um, looking around as if they've not been here before. You get the impression that maybe they haven't. Okay. It's not like they... Uh, are giving you any indication that they've been here before. So and the I'll birds the begin the to party land. know that I think this might be the first time they've been to this castle. Yeah, and they begin to dismount. Somebody should cry out to them. Hey, yo. All right, let me finish uh, bringing them aboard here. Oh, lots of tokens, sorry. And they're all stacked together. So you go out to greet them then? Is that what we're... Like I said, I don't want to do anything that doesn't involve uh, standing on these stones. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually around the corner kind of leaning out. Feet on stone. Okay. Do they do they respond? Um. Yeah, and they say, uh, "Oh, you're you're outside, so they can see you, Greybeard." When you say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I lean out as far as I can without stepping on cloud and yelled, hail. Okay. <laughs> uh, and and they, one of them at the front kind of looks at you quizzically and, and, and just gives a short wave and says, hail. Uh, we're here to speak with the cloud giant. All right, come on in. <laughs> all right now i think i got them all there jesus a bunch of them i back up up to the i go back inside okay uh so oh, yeah uh two of them the enter and they say uh they stay together And they say we're we're here to speak with the cloud giant. Are you his servants? We are passengers. He is upstairs, actually driving the <laughs> castle <laughs> cloud. I, I'm not quite sure what you call this castle thing. We too are here to talk to him. 
they say, okay, well, we, we wish that you would summon him. I yell up and I say, Zephros! And they look at you with Zephros! a funny look. Oh, just the yelling. And then uh, you feel the, the cloud castle s- slow to a, a halt. And then you see the disc again uh, begin to levitate down. And we have okay, Zephros. Appears. Oh, not what I imagined him to look like. Ah, see, he's smiling. He's obviously a good giant. <laughs> he got a dope collar on there. I know. Look at that beard, though. All whiskey and shit. And he says, Yes, yes, I thought we were traveling. What, what is this? You have visitors. And one of them steps forward and uh, bows deeply and introduces himself as uh, Amaranth to Zephros. And he says, great cloud giant Zephros. Um, My name is Amaranth and this is Navan. Kind of gestures to the person next to him. And we would wish to speak with you in private. I, I agree there, Jordals, like, uh. And, uh, and Zephros is like, well, and he kind of looks at you and he, and he, he has this apologetic look on his face and he's like, but would you mind stepping out of the tower for just a moment while I speak with these newcomers? Uh, Short Tower, can we just step behind the curtain? <laughs> is there another place with stone that is not cloud that we can stand on? Something sable? Uh, not really. There's just the, the cloud. This, would this be acceptable? All right, but you give a yell and we got your back. And I eyeball the new people. Oh, I hate every second of this. I mumble in Elvish under my breath as I leave. Okay. Ardrith, you're going to stay or leave? No, I got with the party too. Okay. Didn't drag my token over. All right. Um, So... Uh, Amaranth uh, approaches, and you can see kind of through the translucent curtain there, you can see through it, um, approaches, they bow again to the to the giant. You're, you can hear that they're talking, but you're maybe not quite here. Everybody go ahead and do maybe a, a perception check, and if you roll like a, a really high number, like a 20 or higher, you can probably make out a little bit of what's going on. If not, you're hearing the voice, but you're not able to make out the words. I see in. Well, she can read lips now. Yeah, I was going to let her do that too. All right. So, what you can gather, Ian, as you're as you're kind of listening and watching through the translucent current, it looks like they've introduced themselves, and they he has taken the uh, the bag off his shoulder, and he's offering it as a gift to Zephros to join them in their quest to help. Uh, Yancy Bin. Um, you're not sure what that name means or is, and it's Y A N dash C dash B I N. And it and you're gathering something about helping them return Yancy Bin to the world, uh, helping return the world to its primordial state as it was at the dawn of history. And, and Zephros um, is looking at them very quizzically. He's not quite sure what he should do. And he, and he kind of tells them just a moment. And he, and he walks over back to the curtain. And he says, and he, and he opens the curtain up. And he says, I think they want me to join their quest, he kind of tells you. And he says, but I know that um, fixing the ordning is, is the most important thing, uh, our mission. 
What say you? What is their mission? He says, I'm not real sure what they want me to do. They're just offering me a gift to help them return the world to its primordial state. But I'm not clear on what that would be. Then ask them. They, they, he's like, okay. And he goes back. <laughs> you really do have a low charisma, don't you? <laughs> I, I look at our group and I'm like, well, frack these guys. We'll, we'll save our plane or primordial whatevers. Um, yeah, so he begins talking with them again, and um, they realize that you were that he's told you what they said, and that um, you were so they, they're talking a little bit lower, and it doesn't seem he still has a confused look on his face, and um, he kind of gives them um, what you think is a well, let me think on it, and I will get back to you, answer, and they say okay, and then they begin to leave. And they come through the curtain and you guys make way or block their path or what? As, as Zephros was, was asking them this question, I tell the party that these people are trying to help someone called Yancey Bin to return the world to the primordial state as it was at the dawn of history. Okay. I, I, why don't we just ask him? Yeah. Excuse me, friends. And they no, they stop and as you address them. Since you are inquiring of our common friend, Zephros, may we ask uh, what you would uh, need his help with and maybe we could assist Um, they kind of look at you and and he says, um, well, I believe we really only need the Cloud Giant's help in this. And we have offered him uh, our gift and um, we hope to hear from him his answer soon. And where could he find you? They're going to, oh, we'll be right outside the tower. Oh, like, okay, that makes sense. I thought they were going to leave. And they kind of make to start um, walking past you. Hold up. No walking past you? I'm going to, I want to make sure I can do it first. As a paladin. Paladin time. Just murder hobo. <laughs> no, no. I've got I've got divine sense. Uh, I don't know if it works the same way as, it, as detect evil used to though. No, nah, there's no real detect alignments anymore. That's the weird thing. Alignments are kind of a non-factor in five e. Everybody's mercurial. I um I walk past them and into Zephyrus's. Okay. Business. Are they gonna... well, <laughs> I don't I don't trust them, but I'm going to shoulder him as I walk by. <laughs> You're going to shoulder him. I'm not sure how to read him yet, so I'm just going back into the room as well. Well, turning the world to a primordial soup cannot be a good thing in, in any book. Okay. As I walk by, I give him like a finger gun and I'm like, pterodactyl. I just that random. <laughs> okay. Pterodactyl. And they go back out kind and they go back out to their cultists. Kind of a meta question, but <clears throat> do like in, in, in Dungeons and Dragons, do we know what primordial means? Like, do we know what the original, the beginning of the world was? 
I assume some do. It would depend, I, I guess, how, how much how learned you are in the in history. I asked Zephyros, who has the NC been? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> You'd think they'd provide that. He's just some guy, you know? I want to say it's a god, but let me check it. It sounds familiar. I just, I'm not sure. I'll Google it. Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh he's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys could probably make a religion or history check to know if you recognize that name. Oh, good. I'll do religion now. Oh, good. Not one. Oh, good, too. All right. Ardrith, oh, my you've God. you've never heard Ardrith. of it. Not to be outdone. Coffee, never heard of it. Ian, you've never heard of it. Uh, Finn, you have heard of Yancy Bin as the Archimental, also known as the Prince of Evil Aerial Creatures. <laughs> okay. And and I, def I definitely, I definitely pop yeah. that guy in the shoulder as I walk by him, then. <laughs> I had no idea who that was. He's one of the elemental princes of evil. How do you spell that? Oh, gee. Yan dash C dash Ben. Oh, I'll put it in. Known as Prince of Evil Air. Wow. There's different but you don't really know much more of, other than that. Elemental Prince of Evil. Well, I do ask Yancy. I mean, Zephyros about Yancy. He's, uh, I don't know too much about him, but what I'm, he's going to go and, um, contact, he's going to use some spells to try to figure out, um, anything about these people. And he's going to float back up on his disc and perform a ritual upstairs. So you see him float back up and you hear him begin to cast what you are sure is some type of ritual. I look at the party and I say, do you guys know who Yancy Ben is? I will explain who Yancy Ben is. And Coffee, you can make a Arcana check as maybe one of the only ones that might recognize. Yeah. So nice. you think he's casting um, contact planar entities. Nice. Not, not something you could do, but something you've heard of or have seen maybe before or have read about um, high-level wizards doing. Which immediately so, kind of gives you an idea of his wizard level too, which is pretty high. So he, yeah, he's a serious contender here. Um, all right. And are they still here? They're outside. Hmm. So let me see here. Uh, Did I recognize those birds outside? Uh, yep, yeah, giant vultures. Oh, they're literally giant vultures. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, literally giant vultures. So it wasn't Nayla. No, she hasn't gone to the dark side. It was her aunt. <laughs> yeah, so he's casting contact other plane, and I believe... Okay, the one with the hairy mole? <laughs> so... Are we going to kill him? Have to do, we, do you want to do anything? Oh, okay. I, I don't want to attack anybody that... Uh... He he considers an ally at this point. We just <clears> rather <throat> yeah, just so, get off the cloud if we can, if he's going to say yes to him. So ten minutes goes by, and it, and you, you hear him. Um, what appears for him to uh, finish the ritual, you no longer hear any of the verbal uh, components or anything going on upstairs, and then it just goes quiet, and the tower is not moving at all. And I think. That's where we're going to end tonight's session. Oh. All right. 
didn't even get to use any of my new overlays yet. Darn it. <laughs> we didn't get into combat. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to stop there because I think the rest is going to take us some time to get through. Um, our would-be heroes are in a cloud tower several thousand feet above the ground, and some newcomers have appeared. We, Jarl is still uh, probably at the monastery at this point before we catch back up with him. But we do have everybody up to fourth level. We've got all of the... Um, RPing session out of the way in Waterdeep. So I think we're done pretty good. When we come back next week, we will pick up with the continuation of uh, these newcomers to the tower and see where that takes us. Cool. So hopefully everybody enjoyed the shows. Make sure you, if you missed anything, you can check the VODs out on my channel at the Solution uh, Twitch channel, or you can go to the YouTube to find also Solution to find uh, any of the videos that we uploaded. I know MC Colonel has his YouTube channel and he does it from his perspective. So if you want to see it from a player perspective, you can see it there. We always thank uh, Greybeard for hosting us. And uh, he's another Twitch person that you want to check out on different nights. Go check his schedule out at his channel. Um, and I believe that is all we have for the evening. So we'll go ahead and uh, close this down and we will see everybody next Monday. Hope everybody has a good uh, new holiday. Welcome to the new year, and we'll see you next week.